other thing, if you keep up with everything that's going on with our YouTube, you'll notice that we now have a, a third weekly service. I started doing a midweek uh, conversation over the sermons so that I could kind of get it ingrained into my timeline to do that work. My, my overall goal for that is to do a, a midweek Lenten service during Lent. So we kind of have that extra conversation right now just so that I can have it ingrained in my timeline. But when Lent comes, it won't be a, a third conversation on the same scripture again. What it will become is a very uh, a specific focused thing, sort of like what we tried to do with the book study that unfortunately was one of the first things to get stopped because of uh, COVID. So um, uh, look forward to that. Uh, it'll start, the first week of it will be the Ash Wednesday service. That's on February the 15th, uh, February 17th. And then uh, every Wednesday through uh, Easter will be a very uh, special focused uh, Lenten uh, video each week. And I am praying about doing a, doing, We'll we'll see what we can and can't do. I've I've got some other ideas about Lent, but I need to wait for the governor and the bishop to tell me what's realistic. So uh, we'll keep praying about that. That's all of the day's announcements. Let's join together in prayer. Great and loving God, today we ask to not just be remembered of your spirit and your presence but we ask to be reminded that you are real and active in our lives. Help us actively respond to your grace so that others have the opportunity to do so as well. Amen. As we move into our time of personal prayers today, uh, we continue to begin this weekly prayer practice with prayers of comfort. Uh, numerous names that we will be praying for uh, well, we continue to pray for Larry, uh, Larry and Kathy Hatter's brother, brother-in-law, as he goes through his uh, treatment journey. We continue to pray for Les and Jean's daughter. Um, I got an email yesterday from Theo Hahn, and I don't know if many of you know Theo. He and his, uh, his mom, Jackie, and I can't remember his sister's name, but they uh, normally come to the 1030 service and... Um, uh, I, the family I look forward to seeing and, and saying hi to when they have the ability to come. Um, uh, Theo's dad, Jackie's husband, Kenneth, uh, had a heart attack this week and is still uh, in, I think he said ICU. So if you could please pray for uh, Kenneth Hahn this week for his uh, heart issues. Uh, also, we're going to continue to pray for Marie Ackman and her heart issues. Uh, she has been coming a, as much as she can with the, the assistance of one of her family members driving her to the 10 o'clock service. Uh, she's, she hasn't been here for a couple of weeks and I haven't gotten through on my phone calls. So I know that she's dealing with heart issues. So if we could continue to pray for Marie Ackman as, as well. Uh, we continue to pray for Jim Coffin as he is on his journey with uh, hospice. One of the blessings that I had last Thursday when I was here handing out um, communion kits and receiving uh, different gifts for the Interfaith Shelter Network as well as Brother Benno's clothing is um, Maggie and Jim both came together to pick up their uh, communion kits. Uh, so it was a real blessing to see Jim out. Many times, uh, most of the time, when I have been in pastoral care and prayer for an individual on hospice, you don't see them out of the house. You you really don't. So it was a, a blessing that he was uh, to see him and, and Maggie together uh, when she came by. And to, for him, they, they were going to go to the beach and listen to the waves uh, after they left here. So uh, please, please continue to, to pray for, for Jim as he's on this journey, as well as other friends who are going to continue to pray for uh Jan Aller's family members that are on the journey with dealing with um, COVID issues. Let's be in a moment of prayer for, for comfort and care through, through everyone that's dealing with issues of health and concerns.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Our next collection of prayers is prayers of clarity. And as we move closer to uh, Wednesday, uh, Inauguration Day, there's a lot of concerns right now with, with that process. And uh, so many uh, National Guard troops are in Washington, D.C. right now. There's been many state capitals in, in, in a protective state because of concerns. And I'll share with you because I read a, a post from the United Church of Christ. There's a lot of churches today that are in prayerful places, uh, worries of reactionary behavior. So as we continue to pray for a worldwide situation, and as we pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ and their places of prayer and worry, I, I pray for peace this coming week, a uh, peace that we may not understand and a peace that will open care and hinder conflict. Let's move into a place of, of prayer for clarity and peace for the coming week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Tomorrow is MLK Day. And normally our last prayer is for unspoken needs. And, and there are many. There's uh, unspoken prayer requests for health, health concerns and mental health concerns uh, from our community. But I'd like to add into this time as we pray for the unspoken prayers, uh, a prayer that was written by a United Methodist group called Ministry Matters, and it's a special prayer for MLK Day. It is given to only a few people, O oh God, to rise above the crowds and become symbols of hope and passion to all of us. We thank you for the persons from Moses and Christ to Gandhi and Martin Luther King Jr and for the way they remind us of your care and grace for all the little ones on the earth. We praise you today on Dr. Martin Luther King's birthday for the qualities that shaped his life, for a strong sense of justice that regarded all souls as having importance in your eyes for an unshakable belief in love and gentleness that would not permit him to turn to violence in order to achieve his dreams, for a commitment to sacrifice that led him forward without regard for his own safety, and for an ultimate trust in you, that you would never abandon those who stand up for truth and righteousness in the world. We mourn what would have what the world did to him, the pain and the degradation, and finally the death. But we celebrate the dream for which he stood of a society where lion and lamb would lay down together and the children of all races and backgrounds would mingle together in sweetness and harmony of spirit. Help us to be committed to the dream as he was to care as much about the poor and disenfranchised as he did, to be prepared to pay the price that he paid to ensure its ultimate success. Teach us to love all men and women as our brothers and sisters and to care as much for their welfare as we care about our own and grant that we shall always have heroes whom we admire for their moral clarity the unremitted courage and their passion of righteousness, that your name and your way may be honored in all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, we pray. Amen. 
loving Savior, you have granted us the path of life. We come to you today that our steps may walk this path. Welcome us as we welcome to worship and praise this day. And as we continue in this path of, of prayer and worship, let's join together in the words of the prayer that Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. in our prayer of affirmation. 
Do not fear the uncertainty of the path that lies before you. If Jesus is your guide, you will always be shown the right path. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 43 through 51. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bathsheba. Philip found Nathanael and told him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth, can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said of him, Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus said, You believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You will see greater things than that. He then added, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. The Word of God for all people. Amen. Today, as we break down this scripture from John and move into our prayer exercises, our sermon prayer exercises, there's three things that I want us to really focus on as we look on this scripture today in this prayer service. First of all, I want us to see and remember and be reminded of the individuals that took the opportunity to introduce us to God's love. People who took the time to talk to us, pray for us, serve us cookies in Sunday school. The, the ones that, that dedicated time to introduce us to the greater love of God. The second thing I want us to look at and pray over is the reality that sometimes even when we are given the answer to all of our questions, there is still a moment of hesitation that exists in our lives that slows us down. We're not always willing to jump into the deep end of the pool, but as long as we're willing to learn more, we can find our place in this story. And then finally, the last thing that we'll look at and pray over is the times that we have had personal interactions with a greater grace that has truly revealed to us that God is real, God is love, and God transcends all things. Let's begin with the first. As we look at this conversation between Peter and Nathaniel, Peter is introducing Nathaniel to what they've been waiting for. If you listen to my narrative as we go through our Advent traditions, I commonly bring up a culture of individuals that have been waiting for the one to fulfill the promise. I commonly talk about the one who has come to be the one to balance the scales and create places of peace for all people. Peter goes to Nathaniel and he introduces Jesus as that person. The waiting of the Messiah has ended. Here he is. There's a lot of chance taking that takes place in this conversation. Peter has to take a chance in his relationship with Nathaniel, the trust in their relationship with each other. As he goes over and shares this message with him, he has to trust that Nathaniel will be receptive and that he will trust and believe in what he's sharing. There's a lot of chance taking when that we go out and we share 
our faith with other people, especially now, because there's so many different times that I've heard you share, and I'll be completely honest with you, even within myself, that I see a person crying in the line in the grocery store, and I want to lean over and tell them and remind them that God loves them. And there's still at times a feeling of hesitancy within myself if they'll think I'm some weird nutbag that's just getting in their way and trying to be intrusive. Even those of us that have the deepest faith and even those of us that have dedicated our lives and our careers of being like Peter, being willing to share the message of Jesus Christ with others, still walk on tight ropes of worrying and concern of when we share it. I'll share with you very honestly, and I'm wondering if Peter felt this way as well, as he introduces Nathaniel to this reality that he has realized, that Christ is the Messiah that they have been waiting on. There's many times that I wonder if I share it wrong, if I'll make somebody not believe more than the opportunity of opening their hearts to believing. So unfortunately, so many times, I have seen the message of Jesus Christ corrupted to the extent that I don't want to believe it. And other people can't believe it because of the way the message has been distorted. And in this account with Peter, being a person of pure heart, just wanting to share with Nathaniel a reality. It's my hope at every time that I stand up and read scripture to you, and as I preach from my heart, going through my outline, it is my hope that I share with you a reality that I have experienced in my life in such a way that it be receptive for you. As we move into this first time of prayer, I want you to pray for the chance taking that we take when what we share that Jesus Christ is Lord. When we see the stranger that we give one of these uh, homeless care packages to, we don't know how that interaction is going to go, but we still take a chance and step out and hand a care package and say, Jesus loves you. The times that we have seen the person crying in line and said, hey, I don't know what you're going through, but Jesus loves you. The chance taking that we take as ambassadors of the Messiah to pass peace with other people. In this first moment of prayer, please, please pray for the ones that did that for you and pray for the opportunities that come to you to be that person for other people. Please be in a place of prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. The second part of the scripture, I began to look at Nathaniel, and there, there may be some skepticism in his response. Can anything good come from Nazareth? A lot of times when we get introduced to new ideas and new possibilities, especially when it begins to reveal the revelation that we have waited so long to hear, there can be worry and emotional boundaries that we put up. And we ask the question, can anything good come from? Really trying to weigh out what it means to be receptive to the message that we're being told. In recent days, I have dealt with the perception of world events and how it even tarnishes our image of faith. I listen to a lot of podcasts, especially when I go to sleep. I constantly have something playing so that there's a sound in my room. And one of the podcasts that I listen to is from a comedian named Mark Marin. And if you've never heard Mark Marin's uh, comedy routine, I, I warn you, it's extraordinarily controversial and not family friendly. 
and he has a very skeptical image of the world. And this last week, as, as I listened to his podcast, he, he talked about the events of the Capitol and he ran through a listing of people who were there participating in the events. And one of the categories of people that he listed as being participants on the storming of the Capitol was Christians. And it, it shocked me to hear that. And as I hear that, it reminds me how much more that we have to do to be true images of the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. Because if people in the secular world use their voice and collect our collective name in the moments of harm and hurt, that means that we have to do all so much more to be the real representatives of Jesus Christ. And when people ask the question, can anything good come from Christians, we become the ones that live up to the challenge to say, yes, pure good can come from Christians. As we serve and become the hands and feet of Jesus Christ, as, as we drop off our quarters for laundry bags for dear friends and living transition, as we drop off our clothes for our friends at Brother Benno's so that they can have new clothing for themselves as we get on the internet and talk to dear friends at their homes and we try to share the message of love and peace, the true pure identity of Jesus Christ. The more we do that, the more that we repair hurt that eschews an image, can anything good come from? At this moment, I'd like for you to take a moment of personal prayer as you pray over the challenge that we deal with. Through an skewed presentation of what faith is, how can we be the pure image of what faith is so that other people can see the true loving face of Jesus Christ? Please be in a moment of prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. The last thing that happens is this. We see a person willing to introduce someone to the reality of Jesus Christ's love. And then we see the image of a person that has questions about it. And then we see the willingness to be interactive and to have true conversations about what's happening to be interactive and to have true conversations about the hurts and the pains that are taking place. This stands out very clear to me, especially as tomorrow is Martin Luther King Jr. Day and me as a middle-class white man who wasn't even born when Dr. King worked, I'm still stirred and motivated because of the conversations that Dr. King tried to have. As I listen to Dr. King's sermons and as I hear the speeches, and everything that Dr. King did, both as an advocate of equality, but also living up to his representation of being a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He took the opportunity to go out and share, and unfortunately, things happened the way they did for him, but that opened doors for others to find their place at the table of grace as we continue to work together and strive together for justice and equality, the willingness to communicate. Jesus Christ was willing to communicate with Nathaniel, and Nathaniel found the revelation of a place at the table. And because he found a place at the table, he was promised so much more. 
It's my hope in our lives that we are willing to use our voices, to share our voices, so that we can show everyone their place at the table of grace. At this last time, this last prayer, I want you to pray over the conversations that God may be challenging you to have. And instead of sitting in moments of diversity and letting diversity turn into hate and hate grow into separation, to have the willingness to have a w honest, pure, open-hearted conversation so that we can open avenues for peace and not just open the reality of a place at the table for us, but open the reality of a place at the table for all. Please be in a moment of prayer. On the night in which Christ gave himself for us, he began to share with others the path that he would take to open places at the table. He communicated with those around him using elements that they understood. He talked with those around him using traditions that they understood. As he began to share the reality that something could come from Nazareth, something good could come from Nazareth. As he raised the bread, he shared with those around him, take eat, this is my body which is given for you. As often as you eat it, do it in remembrance of me. Within that conversation, sharing his willingness to interact, his willingness to be an active participant in care and support. On that evening, he raised the cup, and he passed the cup to those around him and shared, drink from this all of you. This is the cup of my covenant for you and for many. As often as you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. Christ, through the sharing of this sacrifice, the sharing of this coming, co coming covenant, being willingly able to actively participate in care and caregiving. Today, as we celebrate these gifts of bread and cup, we celebrate the active love of Jesus Christ. As we pray the prayer and celebrate the mystery of faith that Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Precious God, please bless these gifts of bread and cup and have them to be as your body and blood for us as we celebrate the grace that Jesus Christ brought for one and all. Please receive the gifts of Jesus Christ. Precious God, accept our lives as the gifts we bring before you now, that we may help others come and know your beautiful love and grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we humbly pray in your name. Amen. As we go off into the week ahead of us, I pray that you be the peace that others need to see. As we go off into our coming week, I pray that even in our own personal places of questioning, we see the light of Jesus Christ guiding us to answers. And I pray in our coming week, we see the places that we can have pure interaction with others and we can share with them a love that exceeds all others. May the peace of God reign throughout our lives. May the love of Christ ever be our foundation. May the Spirit of God empower us on our life's journey, that the joy of God may be strengthened and strengthen our foundation of love. 
May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. I pray that God be real for you every day. Amen. We'd like to have the opportunity to get to know you. Please email us at ncumcinfo at gmail.com. And if you've been enjoying our services online, please email us. Please say hello. Again, that's ncumcinfo at gmail.com. And also, if you'd like to give to our church, please go to northcoastumc.org and click on the Give button. Again, that's northcoastumc.org and click on the Give button. Thank you for joining us.